What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Stevie, the Black Test, T-E-V-E-E, the Black, I'm back. And I'm here to give you my Monday Night Raw review. Normally, I do my reviews on Tuesday, but yesterday was Blackout Tuesday, so I was like, you know what? I'm not going to post nothing, not going to put a video up. I'm going to, you know, go along with it. And now, here we are Wednesday. So, without wasting any more time, let's get right into the review. So Raw kicks off with Seth Rollins, who comes out, and before his match with Aleister Black, he has a retirement ceremony prepared for Rey Mysterio, you know, talking more about, you know, how much, how he sacrificed uh, uh, for, you know, for the greater good and everything, and, you know, how when he does go into the Hall of Fame, he wants to induct him and everything, he even had a... He even had a, a, a package, a video package and everything ready. It's, first of all, nobody believed the whole Rey Mysterio retirement thing anyway. And for some reason, it went from, oh, Rey's going to retire next week to, oh, we're going to check on Rey's condition. Like, where did that come from? Maybe it was Seth Rollins the whole entire time saying it was his retirement ceremony. I don't know. But anyway, this brings out Aleister Black who they start their match early, uh, they go at it, it's pretty into, a pretty good match until uh, Austin Theory and Murphy try to interfere until Humberto comes out and backs him up, uh, which allows uh, Aleister Black and uh, Rollins to continue their match, you know, they're still going at it until uh, uh, what do you call it, Murphy and uh, Austin Theory start attacking Black, which Humberto then gets involved, takes them out, which distracts Rollins, which allows Black to go ahead and get the roll up for the win. Uh, Seth is shaking at first, but then he beats down and curve stomps both Humberto and Aleister Black. And uh, that's how the first uh, segment of Raw ends. Next up, we had Apollo Crews coming out celebrating his United States Championship victory last week, and he's going to have a championship match with the opponent of his choosing he chooses kevin owens kevin's like yo are you thanks for the offer you know i've been champion a while but are you choosing me out of pity and he's like nah i'm choosing you because you know i respect you and everything so they have their match and this whole time i'm watching the match i'm thinking two things either one apollo's gonna turn heel or two he's gonna lose the title and then turn heel because you know he all this hard work you know he's gonna want to keep his title at all any cost right but nope, instead, uh, Andrade and uh, Angel Garzna come and they attack uh, and inter and uh, attack the match. So when we get from back from commercial break, we have a tag team match. Doesn't last very long. Uh, Apollo Crews and uh, Kevin Owens pick up the win, and there you go. So I'm interested to see how this is going to go with Apollo. Also, earlier before this, Garza was in a interview, and he was talking about how... He uh he want, he goes after what he wants. So I'm thinking, is he trying to go after maybe the United States Championship? And how is that gonna work if he's champion and not Andrade? Are they gonna split up? Is Selena gonna choose Andrade over Garza? I don't know. We'll see. But uh, we'll we'll see how the story develops. Anyway, next up we have bowling between the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders. Um, it was just straight up bowling. Uh, and for whatever reason they make this joke where. For some reason, the Street Fathers can't bowl. Bowling is very, very simple. I don't understand why they were struggling the way they did. Uh, but, you know, eventually uh, they uh, they uh, catch up and they're winning until the very last uh, uh, try for the Viking Raiders who they throw Ivar with the ball and he gets a strike or pretty much all the pins he needs, and they win by one point. So the Viking Raiders and Street Profits are tied up 2-2, so I'm guessing the steam and blow-off to this is going to be a championship match at Backlash. Uh, very looking interested in that match if it does happen next week, um, but we'll see. Next up, uh, it's supposed to be a match between Billy Kay and Nikki Cross, but before the match starts... Uh, they're in the back arguing and pushing and shoving each other. So then when we get back from commercial break, they're in the ring. They're having the match. Uh, match ends when Billy Cross ends up winning the match after a fail from Nikki Cross. And uh, the icon, or Billy Kay, wins. So 
very interesting. I'm I'm supposing next week, next Monday, we're gonna have a match between uh, Alexa Bliss and uh, Billy Kay's partner, oh, God, which Peyton Royce. So um, that's assuming if they're still the tag team champions on SmackDown, but I think they will be. So it's okay. Um, Next up, we have Rey Mysterio, who responds to Seth Rollins. You know, he has a patch over his eye, and they're asking him, Hey, Rey, so how you doing? And everything. He's like, yeah, I'm okay. He's like, my family's been going through a lot because of the injury and everything. And they basically asked him, they said, are you going to retire? And he's like, I don't know. He was like, it's an eye injury. It's complicated. I could be uh, uh, cleared in a couple weeks, or I can never be cleared again. Uh, but then Dominic comes in, and he's looking out revenge for uh, for Seth. So I'm interested to see how this goes. Obviously, this whole thing has been building towards a match. I did not see Dominic, Dominic getting involved, but if he does, then uh, we're interested to see how this goes. Um, because, you know, Seth, uh, not Seth, Ray calls out him and says, darn you for putting me through this, put my family through this, I'm going to come get you. And then Ray leaves, and then Dominic's like, yo, you're a, you're a religious man, right? And he was like, an eye for an eye. So, again, interested to see where this is going to go. Uh, is it going to be Dominic versus Seth? Is it going to be Ray versus Seth? I don't know, but we're going to definitely see. This is interesting. Um, next up, uh, we have a segment from earlier in the day in Boston, Massachusetts. R-Truth uh, pins Gronk, and he's able to get the 24-7 championship back. Um, this was used so Gronk you know, could be get, get out of his WWE contract because he's uh, going back to play for the NFL because he follows Tom Brady everywhere. You know, he's He said... Oh, I'm the reason why I'm playing for Tampa is so I can be close to my mom. Well, you can be close with your mom if you just move to Tampa or if you move near that area. You don't have to play football. You went there because Tom Brady was there. So stop lying to everybody. Gronk. Uh, next up, we had Nia Jax taking on uh, Kyrie Sane, and it was a complete domination. Nothing really else to say. Nia Jax wins. Uh, and builds momentum towards... Uh, uh, backlash after the match, Oscar comes out, defends her friend, so that way Nia Jax can't do anything, and she uh, walks away and leaves. Then after that, we get the match of Charlotte Flair versus Oscar match I've been waiting for because I want Oscar to beat Charlotte. Uh, it was a pretty good match. Uh, sh uh, eventually, it leads to a point where uh, Oscar gets uh, neat kicked to the outside. She's there, and then we hear Oscar's music playing. And it's Nia Jax, who's dressed up like, uh, uh, who's dressed up like Asuka, you know. Um, and then before, she starts running towards her, and then before she even touches her, the bell rings. And I'm so confused. I'm like, what? She didn't even touch her. What's going on? Turns out it was a count out. I guess she was out there for 10 seconds. Um, and, uh, Nia Jax runs her over and then walks away. I mean, she had the mask on, she had the makeup on and everything. So it was used as a distraction. And, uh, once again, Charlotte Flair beats Asuka. <sighs> and then finally, we had Drew McIntyre taking on MVP. Uh, it was a quick little match. Uh, Lana comes out, and I thought she was going to distract MVP, but there was no need for that. Drew ends up winning the match. After the match with the Claymore, uh, Bobby Lashley comes in and puts the full Nelson in on Drew McIntyre, and that's how Raw ends and fades to black. So that is how Raw ends. I'm gonna give Raw, I'm gonna give Raw a C plus. I thought it was okay. I thought it was a pretty good show. Nothing stood out. Uh, nothing was too terrible or anything. Um, but I thought overall it was a pretty decent show. So I gave it a C. Um, notes. So uh, I'm not gonna be home. This weekend, uh, I'm going away for a little for for the weekend, and because of that, I'm not going to be able to post my SmackDown review that I normally do. So I'm just letting you guys heads up know that right now. But I still will be able to get my uh, Unforgiven, is Unforgiven, yeah, my Unforgiven pay per view review for the Austin era. So. Look out for that. That's still coming out on Monday, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That was Raw. Um, yeah, so unless something comes up in the next couple of days, you won't see me again till Monday. And uh, if you're not down with that, I've just got two words for you. Peace out, and I'll catch you guys later.